Dan Gallagher. I'm the CIO of Cape Cod Community Cape College here on Cape Cod, uh, and I'm also the president and chairman of the Open Cape Corporation, a nonprofit 501c3. My name is Mara Mahoney. I'm the vice president of sales and marketing for RCN Metro Optical Networks. A little over three years ago, uh, I became the CIO of Cape Cod Community College and discovered that our bandwidth needs for the college were far less than we had available to us. I decided to call a conference at, oh, along with several other folks uh, at Cape Cod Community College and asked if anybody was interested in talking about this issue that they come and participate in a small conference. About a hundred people appeared. Uh, this really confirmed for me that this wasn't just the college's problem but the entire region's problem. So when we first learned about Open Cape, the th things that excited us about the opportunity was the number of years that Open Cape had spent uh, developing a plan to build out broadband to the Cape and the South Coast. Uh, also their approach of that public-private partnership uh, made it something that could be sustainable long term, which was positive for RCN Metro Optical Networks. Um, and finally, the collaborative approach that they took, not only just understanding the needs of the municipalities, the local, state and government, the libraries, and building out the community's requirements for broadband, but also understanding how a service provider can come in and be successful in that marketplace. After extensive work, we have really devised a, a solution that is really a system for the region. The basics of the, the Open Cape proposal are three components of a system, 350 miles of fiber optic cable, a microwave overlay, and a co-location center for the entire region for both commercial and public use. I think you see this map here that depicts the 350 miles. You'll note that it's not just Cape Cod that we're addressing because ultimately we could uh, connect the entire Cape region uh, to itself, but it must go somewhere else. And that somewhere else is really to major connection points in Providence and via Brockton to Boston. Uh, that adds an additional component that, that allows us to pass through the south coast, uh, as you see here, Fall River and New Bedford, uh, along that south coast region, that also have needs like ours, aren't yet, yet matured in the development of a comprehensive solution like we have, but we're building enough capacity for them to build off of our infrastructure. We decided early on that we really needed to have uh, the technical competence brought in uh, to aid us. Uh, we chose RCN Metro Optical Networks because we wanted that competence in the design. Uh, we wanted that uh, capability and experience in the operation of our network. What RCN Metro Optical Networks is building is a fiber-based network that has optical wavelengths layered on top of that. What it means to the community is virtual, virtually unlimited bandwidth and scalability that will serve them not only now and into the future. So initially the design will be multiple 10 gigabit wavelengths that will be able to evolve to 40 gig up to 100 gig as that technology becomes available. So we're well positioned and suited to not only meet the needs now, but grow as future innovation occurs. We know that RCN Metro Optical Networks is a perfect partner for Open Cape because of our experience and expertise in designing, building, and managing middle mile networks. It's something that we've done for more than 10 years. This is a natural extension to our network. We have a strong presence in the Boston area, so we bring in choice to the community. So we have a strong working relationship with other service providers, so we know we'll be able to leverage this infrastructure to provide that last mile connectivity that is crucial to really realize the um, promise that this type of a network brings to a community. There are many benefits to the Open Cape network being constructed. One is the immediate benefit. Uh, on the day that we're taping this, uh, unemployment in Massachusetts has exceeded 9%. Uh, in the South Coast region of Fall River to Bedford, they're at 15%. Uh, so the stimulus package intent is to create jobs also. Uh, because we are a shovel-ready project, we'd immediately begin work upon receipt of funds. Uh, and we have had a, uh, using a university-developed uh, model, uh, estimated the immediate job at 233 jobs. Uh, in addition, there are indirect jobs, which have a relationship. They're not necessarily directly involved in our project, but they're working on things that might support the project, supplying, etc. Uh, 197 jobs are estimated for our project. So there's an immediate benefit to the community uh, by us uh, in implementing this project. Yeah. We are very hopeful that we'll get a grant from the NTIA. We really do reflect one of the priorities that they have there is a real emphasis, obviously, on bringing at least some minimal broadband capacity
to communities that have nothing right now, and everybody appreciates the need for that and the importance of that. But there was also an intention within the bill uh, to develop other things, and our project tends to fall more on this, even though we have unserved and underserved areas within our region. Uh, we're le really um, serving as a model for another uh, further step in our country's initiative uh, to move forward into the 21st century, and we think we're